Hi there. Say, I am going to be working on these again. I have uh, 10 of these round panels. They're about 22 inches across. Uh, and I have a couple different layers on here. I had started these uh, with some uh, uh, absorbent ground and uh, gesso. And then I went in with the, these lighter gray marks here are a Japanese ink uh, with a uh, kind of a quill uh, brush and then I went over a different uh, time with some of these darker marks here and then I sprayed it with a water bottle and uh, and so many of the marks you can see I can maybe get this a little closer uh, they started the spider web which is really nice in the beginning of these paintings um, my process is to kind of just uh, muddy up the surface a little bit get it to be broken up a little bit and um, and just kind of react spontaneously to the big white uh, space now the ideas that i'm going to be working on are um are uh, are portals or the round sort of format of these um there isn't a bottom right now and so i can spin them around and look at uh look for different um shapes in them and uh so anyway, the beginnings of these just turn out to be kind of like a improvisational, um, uh, I don't know, relationship developing um, marks, really. And the relationship is me and the sort of the works. So right now I'm kind of spinning this around. Now I am taking in the, the composition and I'm trying to observe what parts stand out to me and when and what I have right now is uh, is uh, is a little bit of uh, acrylic Titan buff um, and it's kind of an off-white and I like to keep things light at the beginning because I know that I, I like to do some glazing over the top I like to um, work uh between lights and darks sort of alternately and i think i'm still in sort of the light phase and so what i'm going to do is watch for some areas that tend to sort of raise up or or calm uh, grab my attention and i start looking at it and starting to break this thing up into some shapes now i've been doing this on a few already and uh, i have three left and i wanted to kind of show you how that goes i'm using a one inch flat or a bright and uh, I'm going to come in and uh, give this a few sprays, um, just maybe three. And then I'm going to, well, I know already like this shape here is pretty dominant. And so I'm going to come in and create a shape out of this. Um, and this is in a way to kind of just um, uh, understand a little bit more about what a composition might look like on this piece um, and to start to come to terms uh, with the surface of the canvas. I'm also playing with a concept uh, that seems to surface in my work about dominance and subordinate or subordination and this idea that some elements stand out as being dominant and others can be uh less dominant i suppose or maybe um creating a hierarchy now you can see already um that that shape takes a predominance now over lots of other things in the work um it uh, it creates a sort of weight um and i love sort of beginning this way because it um allows me to sort of tune my my mind my perception into this format also um, it helps to ground me when i'm beginning the painting um, so that i'm not worried too much about making uh you know a, a picture of something yet um, rather it is a, a way of sort of um i don't know prepping prepping the painting for what might come later and uh, and a lot of these marks will be painted over um, but right now i know that these are kind of introductory uh, moves that I'm doing right now and here's another one and you can see already how it's changing the feel of this now like this passage is really coming forward um, and then in different areas different things move up in the order of importance and 
this is kind of like um really it's really like uh making music um some things come forward in their dominance uh and you can hear them you can experience them and see them and then um that forces others to almost automatically be pushed back and this kind of a push and pull maybe that's an overused term but but the uh, i'm i'm really thinking about push and pull not just visually but just sort of in what your what your what your perception pays attention to and now this piece has uh has a totally different feel than it did when I first started. Now it's kind of bubbly. Um, it's a little bit like it's, uh, I'm actually rotating it, but it's kind of, uh, it's kind of beginning to have a little bit of a structure. Um, and I want to sort of, I don't know, I want these to, to entice people to continue to look. And I also hope that they present, a, an image that, uh, that kind of draws you in and that maybe that you see something different every time you look at it so when i get to a point like this i'm going to stop and let that one dry and i'm going to grab a new one and so i have a couple others right here here's another one i tend to look for as i'm painting the shapes or uh, discovering some uh sort of structure in here um I try to find shapes that will create some sort of a balance, I guess. Um, and I'm just moving this around here to see what what really jumps out at me. Um, and I think this passage over here, and what I'm doing is just trying to find some aspect of a shape. So I went from some pretty free form lines that were kind of a little bit chaotic um, and they were overlapping each other. Uh, so the first series of marks then gets interrupted by the next layer of marks and and uh then together these shapes you know are are kind of formed by by maybe both aspects of those lines um sometimes where they intersect um i may switch from following one series of lines to the other um and in that way it's sort of like two two moments in the past um create the shape of the present i guess um the shape that um that i'm making now with this uh with this buff color um they really are products of the things that came before um and and it's setting up some hierarchies uh of uh things that are grabbing our attention um and then by painting over some marks, like in here, for instance, it sort of pushes them back or makes them a little bit less uh, noticeable. So I consider my paintings kind of visual experiences for people. I like them to to have a uh, have a real I don't know a, just an, a, 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 an experience, I guess, when they look at them, and then they can kind of figure out the meaning as they go oh, that's kind of neat isn't it oh here's a nice big shape too um so i like the way this paint kind of just flows off the brush and uh, i can do this spontaneously i like the fact that i'm not really putzing over things too much right now There we go. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. And then the last one. 
that's right here. So again, thinking about dominance or a dominant elements and subordinate elements, some of these elements here are pretty dominant. This big swoosh here is really coming forward. Some of these smaller lines become dominant because they're a little bit more delicate, I guess. Um, and in fact, I'm going to start down here. This is really, um, I'm kind of making solid the shapes that I see in the jumble of lines. So it's kind of like a little game, I suppose. Um, and, uh, and it's also about a, sort of awareness, um, just, uh, tracking a little bit, like what is drawing my attention? Um, our vision is so intense and, um, we have quite the, uh, superpower, I suppose, um, to recognize things and for our minds to sort of make make meaning from chaos in a way. So I'm looking at this jumble of lines and I am trying, or my brain is trying to really uh, create some sort of sense or make sense of what's happening. And it does that by grouping my perception, my visual perception is grouping uh, things together um, by how dark they are or how the lines interconnect or and now uh, I'm just making those connections very obvious so the things that I see go together are what I am I am trying to accentuate here with these shapes so this one's gonna be a little tricky I think not as many intersecting lines but I think I'm gonna do this big space over here I like these round bubble shapes. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So I think I, I just really enjoy the dialogue over a number of days that I have kind of with myself uh, through the painting. Um, so what looks good today might not look good tomorrow, I suppose. Um, and and I, I, I just really love finding discovering shapes uh and and kind of the surprise that happens when i start you know filling them in like this this is nice i'm going to tie these two shapes together here That's pretty sweet. Okay. So that's the... That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's a good division. Very good. So, that's the, the last one in the group. I have 10 of these, and uh, this was kind of the second step. So going between the first stage, which was a gestural uh, lighter gray to a gestural darker gray with some water, which kind of got it to spider web and kind of spread out. And then, um, uh, oh, I should, I should also mention that the, this ink that I use is a water-based ink. And so what I did before I started doing these uh, buff areas, these shapes, uh, is I painted this with a matte uh, gel medium to kind of lock in those ink marks. And uh, and so what happened is that when, as I'm doing it, the brush picks up a few of the ink, uh, a little bit of the ink, and smears it. So there's kind of a nice brushy quality that's coming out in those dark areas. I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a little bit of blurring, um, and I and I really enjoy that. So this is the second step for me. Um, we'll see. I'll set these up in the studio and live with them for a few days, maybe a week, and then decide what the next step is. And usually I go between contrasts. So we were uh, sort of the white of the of the board first, then gray, then black, and some uh, gestural lines, and now shapes. 
that are kind of this off-white color. And uh, I, I'm, I wonder what will happen next. I think maybe I'm, I'm sensing that I'm going to go with some geometric divisions uh, in this. Um, and then probably, well, I don't know. We'll see where it leads. I hope you found this interesting, and uh, I'll see you next time.